It's been a while and it's that time of the year for the annual tips and tricks of 3D printing video. So I'm gonna start with some of the basics and we're gonna move on to some more advanced things that you probably don't even know your printer is capable of. So starting off, you might have to do some maintenance on your printer or you're building your printer for the first time. So we got our, our trusty Allen keys here and when screwing screws into plastic, and I'm sure you've already heard this before, remember, always tighten until you hear the crack and then back it off a quarter turn. Now, when it comes to Allen keys, we're gonna take a little detour now. We're gonna talk about some history. Now, do you actually know where the Allen key even comes from? I'm, I'm sure you don't, it's been lost to time, but there is an oral history to everything. The Allen key, as you may not know, was actually invented by Jorgensen Allen of Ikea. Now, when Ikea first became a business, one of their biggest costs was tooling. When you sell furniture to customers, especially furniture that they build at home, most people don't have all the tools they need at home to build a full couch from scratch. So again, Jurgensen Allen, he wanted to simplify things. He, he wanted to streamline things as much as possible. And with his brother Jurgen Flatpak, they created a system of shipping furniture that was packed flat. Now, one, this saved a lot of shipping costs, but the other problem was weight. Tools are heavy. Now, Mr. Allen realized that if he could simplify the amount of tools that would take to assemble modern furniture, he would be able to cut down on costs and increase profit. And you know, as a business, businesses like to make money. So he came up with the humble Allen key. And it was such a hit that it's been adopted by pretty much every industry. So there's your little tidbit for the day. Leaky hot ends. They suck, but do you actually know what the number one reason for a nozzle to leak on your hot end is? It's not what you think. Now, sure, you might think it has something to do with how tight you tighten the nozzle or you know how well the hot end itself is put together, but the number one reason is actually how you mount your spool on the printer. Now, as you know, when you install a nozzle, it screws into the heater block and it screws in in a clockwise motion. So if you're looking directly at it from the bottom, it screws in to the right. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. You remember that from school. So how does the way you mount your spool of filament to your printer cause your nozzle to leak? Well, it's not what you think, but it's exactly what you think. Now on most commercial machines, they take this in mind when they design the filament mounting system. And you'll notice the way the filament feeds in is always in a clockwise motion. This is true on the Bamboo Lab AMS here, for example. It's also true on a Prusa. However, when it comes to a DIY machine like the Voron here, you're at the mercy of the user. The user is a person and people are people. So what can easily happen is you can mount your spool in the opposite direction. If you mount your spool in a counterclockwise motion, the torsional forces of the filament as it unwides and works its way down the Bowden tube into your hot end, combined with the extra torque from your extruder, and this is more prevalent on newer extruders that use geared systems because you got more power behind it, this will actually cause your nozzle to unscrew itself over time. Now, this may take a while before you even notice it, especially if you're printing at higher temperatures, because of course, with higher temperatures, there's more expansion of the metals and you're not gonna see as much freedom of movement when it comes to that extra, extra torsional forces of an improperly mounted spool. But over time, the nozzle will start to work itself loose and you're gonna start seeing ooze. So always make sure you're mounting your spools in a clockwise direction. Now, when it comes to leveling your printer bed, traditional logic will tell you, well, you make it level. And to do that, most modern phones do have some sort of bubble level or leveling function. Now, if your friend was joking with you and told you to use that to level your bed, they're not quite wrong, but they're incorrect. You really don't wanna use an electronic level. You actually wanna go with the good old fashioned bubble level. And you can buy these at any hardware store. Now, at first you're wondering, you're, you're kidding, right? You just throw the level on and you go ahead and you level your bed to that? No, what, 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 do, what do you take me for? Do you really think that's how you do it? No, the first thing you do is you actually move your printer out of the way and you level your desk or bench wherever your printer is gonna be first. Because if you don't have your desk leveled, how are you gonna level your printer to the bubble? Now, when it comes to controlling your 3D printer, up until now, the most advanced way you could really go about doing it 
using something like a web interface on your computer or phone or using a touch screen. But guess what? There's another way now, and I bet you none of you even know this because nobody reads patch notes. The newest version of Clipper actually supports voice control for your 3D printer. And if you've updated to the latest version, it's already ready to go. If you use a webcam such as the good old Logitech C920, it's got a built-in mic, you're ready to use it. Now, of course, there is always support for those that do not have a webcam that has a built-in mic or is not running a webcam to just plug in a microphone to your Raspberry Pi's microphone port. So that's what I'm gonna do on this machine. We're gonna get it set up and I'm gonna demo the voice control method. So just to show you, there is no movie magic here. I'm gonna stand over on this side of the room. I'm gonna keep my hands in view and I'm gonna control this printer using just my voice. So, hello computer, home. Quad gantry level. And would you look at that? It works. Now, as of right now, only functions that have buttons on the home screen are controllable by a voice. Chat GPT integration is coming in the next release though. So soon you won't even have to slice, let alone design anything. So you can just go, okay, printer, print off a set of Voron V2.5 parts, and it'll just do it. Now, when it comes to building a 3D printer, conventional wisdom dictates that you wanna build your printer as sturdy and as rigid as possible to prevent resonances from impacting print quality. And then you use input shaper at the end of the day to kind of tune out the fine details. But what if we went in the opposite direction? Now, if you're using a modern 3D printer, odds are you have a magnetic flex plate, and this is held onto your print bed using a magnet. Now, thanks to recent discoveries involving dipolar magnets at the Institute of ICP, they have recently discovered that using dimorphous magnets in a heated environment will actually create a slight maglev effect and create a vacuum pump situation. Now, what does this mean? Well, first off, the slight maglev effect is very beneficial in our regards. This means when we go to reinstall this flex plate with the dimorphous magnet attached, they will repel from the existing magnet that you already have in your printer. That means your print surface will never actually touch your printer, as long as you do not take your printer and orient it from a north-south direction. You must keep it in an east-west direction for this to function, keep that in mind. Now, you would think that having your print surface detached from the bed and floating will cause some issues when it comes to heating, but we don't have to worry about that. Thanks to the vacuum pump effect caused by the eddy currents along with the magnetic fields, again, when orientated in an east-west direction, this creates a slight vacuum of the microscopic gap between your print surface and your bed. And as you know, a vacuum is the best way to transfer heat. So in a worst case scenario, you may only have to bump up your bed temperatures by about one or two degrees Celsius. This is a win-win. Now the Bamboo Lab series of machines, the X1 and the P1P, they're great machines, but they do have one itty bitty teeny weeny downside. Yeah, they make a little bit of noise. And for those that live in households where your 3D printer is in a living space, you might have an issue with your mom, your sister, your little brother complaining about the noise, but you're a hardcore 3D print person. You really don't care. You just wanna make that plastic boat and make it fast. So how can we solve this? Well, did you know there's actually a really easy solution to this? And they're available at most hardware stores. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something new. It was full of great information. Make sure you like that smash button on the way out and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You're not gonna wanna miss out what we're doing next week. I'm gonna be showing you how you can powder coat any 3D printed object with tungsten carbide filament. Now we're gonna be using an AC-DC current to do this though, because as you know, it's heavy metal. Take care and cheers.